Welcome, Buxton United Methodist Church and everybody else on the internet who happens to come across this, but welcome to service for June 7th, 2020. This is Trinity Sunday and Peace with Justice Sunday. So I'm Ron Adams, I'm stepping in for Pastor Lynn Briggs. We wanted to get her a break and not burn her out totally. She's got those boys at home. She's got all those changes coming down the road for both from the conference and from the CDC and everybody else. So Lynn needed a break and I wanted to give a service. So here we go. Let's get started on the service today. Uh, I am at home, so the dogs might bark. The crickets are kind of loud, so I shut down the windows. It's gonna get hot, but let's stay with it and we'll get through this together. So um, I'm gonna throw a little screen share on here and we're gonna do a couple more projects. Hopefully it'll all work out. By the end of it, we'll be somewhere we wanna be, right? So this is Trinity Sunday. It is love times three. That's where I went with it. That was my view of what was gonna go on. So let's do a call to worship together. This is out of the hymnal. You can read along. You get the bold side, I'll take the little side. I'll help you out. Oh Lord, open my eyes that I may see the needs of others. Open my ears that I may hear their cries. Open my heart so they need not be without succor. Let them not be afraid to defend the weak because of the anger of the strong, nor afraid to defend the poor because of the anger of the rich. Together, show me where love and hope and faith are needed and use me to bring them to those places. Amen. So I threw in a little bit of music. I'm hoping we're not in trouble for this, but uh, you know what? When I thought about today's Trinity Sunday and Creator and all these things that you'll see coming up, Awesome God is the tune I came to. So um, let me figure out how to get that playing for you. It should be fun. It was a, it was a nice version that I found and uh, I think you'll enjoy it. You can always take the link off the bulletin. Um, I've had got that in another email, but uh, let's see what we can do with this. Enjoy this for a few moments. There we go. Well, that was a little abrupt. Sorry about that, but that's just like we do it in church on Sundays, isn't it? When we're back in Buxton. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that's where we get to go with it. Um, but uh, let's keep moving on into our uh, space and I've got to get us back to that share and get me back on my PowerPoint. So how's that for getting lost in the world of the internet? That was easy, you just hit X, it takes them right out. <laughs> so let's 
work together. We're going to do this call for reconciliation. It's, uh, it, it was a nice setup for this uh, Peace with Justice Sunday. So the Creator gave us authority over all that was good, and we have fallen short. We are invited in, to turn to God and ask for His forgiveness. So join together. You read along just like I'm going, so let's get started. God of justice and peace, we know that you created us in the diversity of your image, but we still refuse to see you reflected in the face of our neighbor who lacks adequate health care, experiences hunger, doesn't have a home. We don't see your image in the face of our neighbor who has a different skin tone, worships in a different tradition, speaks in a language we don't understand. Forgive us for lashing out from our sense of scarcity and greed, ignorance and fear. Turn us around to be peacemakers and justice builders, recognizing the abundance and balance of your garden. So Paul writes to the church in Corinth, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. In our faithfulness, we know that Jesus forgives us and guides us back to the garden path. Thank you, God. Amen. So we have a slew of Bible readings today. Um, I think I'll keep these up there unless you really want to see me sweat and move things around instead of just on the little screen over here. But let me get started. Today's Old Testament reading, that wasn't an earthquake, is out of Genesis. And I might be able to read it if I get these on here. So this is 1 through 2.4. So we start at the beginning. When God began creating the heavens and the earth, the earth was a shapeless, chaotic mass, with the Spirit of God brooding over the dark vapors. <clears throat> then God said, let there be light, and light appeared. And God was pleased with it and divided the light from the darkness. He called the light daytime <clears throat> and the darkness nighttime. Together they formed the first day. And God said, let the vapors separate to form the sky and the oceans below. So God made the sky, dividing the vapor from the Above, from the water below, this all happened on the second day. <clears throat> then God said, let the water beneath the sky be gathered into oceans so that the dry land will emerge. And so it was. Then God named the dry land earth and the water seas. And God was pleased. <clears throat> and he said, let the earth burst forth with every sort of grass and seed bearing plant and fruit trees with seeds inside the fruit so that these seeds will produce the kinds of plants and fruits they came from. And so it was, and God was pleased. This all occurred on the third day. <clears throat> then God said, let bright lights appear in the sky to give light to the earth and to identify the day and the night. And to mark the days and years. And so it was. For God had made two huge lights, the sun and moon, to shine down upon the earth, the larger one, the sun, to preside over the day, and the smaller one, the moon, to preside through the night. He had also made the stars. And God set them in the sky to light the earth, and to preside over the day and night, and to divide the light from the darkness. And God was pleased. This all happened on the fourth day. Then God said, let the waters teem with fish and other light. Let the skies be filled with birds of every kind. So God created great sea animals and every sort of fish and every kind of bird. And God looked at them with pleasure and blessed them all. Multiply and stock the oceans, he told them. And to the birds, he said, let your numbers increase, fill the earth. That ended the fifth day. <clears throat> and God said, let the earth bring forth every kind of animal cattle, reptiles, and wildlife of every kind, and so it was. God made all sorts of wild animals and cattle and reptiles, and God was pleased with what he had done. Then God said, let us make a man, someone like ourselves, to be the master of all life upon the earth and in the skies and in the seas. So God made man like his maker. Like God did God make man. Man and maid, did he make them? And God blessed them and told them, Multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. You are masters of the fish and birds and all the animals. And look, I have given you seed-bearing plants throughout the earth and all the fruit trees for your food. 
and I've given all the grass and plants to the animals and birds for their food. Then God looked over all that he had made, and it was excellent in every way. This ended the sixth day. Now at last, the heavens and earth were successfully completed with all that they contained. So on the seventh day, having finished his task, God ceased from his work he had been doing. And God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy, because it was the day when he ceased this work of creation. What a story, huh? All right. Today's epistle, a little bit different, a little bit shorter. I think I'm headed to the right one. Yep. 2 Corinthians 13, 11 through 13. Eleven through thirteen. So this is the uh, last letter that Paul was writing. This is Paul's final advice to the church at Corinth. I close my letter with these last words: Be happy, grow in Christ, pay attention to what I have, I have said, live in harmony and peace, and may the God of love and peace be with you. Greet each other warmly in the Lord. All the Christians here send you their best regards. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. May God's love and the Holy Spirit's friendship be yours. That's from Paul. No doubt, you have to go sit. Go, go over there. Go, go sit. Wants to help. He won't turn the pages very well. His, his paws are kind of sticky. So these are the words of God. Now let's get on to today's gospel reading. This is Matthew 28, 16 through 20. And this is the story of Jesus. Jesus gives the great commission. Then the 11 disciples left for Galilee, going to the mountain where Jesus had said they would find him. There they met him and worshiped him. But some of them weren't sure it was really Jesus. He told, he told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and earth. Therefore, go and make disciples in all the nations, baptizing them into the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And then teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you, and be sure of this, that I am with you always, even to the end of the world. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Got to figure out where I'm going next. I think it's the sermon. That'd be interesting, wouldn't it? It is the sermon. So, hey, we can go back to, uh, you know what? I'm going to stop the share just for a moment. Let's get back to here. So today's sermon, I was really working on uh, what's it like to have the Trinity. And then, you yeah, know, there was this other thing going on, Peace with Justice Sunday. So I did a little more reading. I did a little more praying. I did a little more discerning. And then I did a lot of writing. But you're lucky. I cut it down. So we're only, yeah, we'll, we'll be okay on time. You'll still get to the, your next project in plenty of time. But uh, please join me in this prayer to get started. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your eyes. You are our rock, our redeemer, and our Lord. Amen. So welcome to Trinity Sunday. Welcome to the Peace and Justice Sunday. How fortunate we are to have both topics so relative to our world this very day. Our world is convoluted by an unseen bug that has us sheltering at home while over 108,000 fellow Americans have died from it. Our world is convulsed by the legacy of racism playing out once again with the death of a black man for questionable cause. Our world is twisted by decisive divisiveness as our leaders, our families, our towns, and even our neighbors fighting over toilet paper in the store. We need God's love in all its forms today more than ever. Trinity Sunday is about God's love, the love of God our creator, it is also God's love as a man living among us as Jesus. 
The third leg of the Trinity is God's love as the Holy Spirit. That was Pentecost last week, right? You were paying attention. It was that magical moment from Pentecost that filled the disciples with the power to spread the good news of Jesus. The power of love that resides in our hearts today. All of God's love in many forms for us, just when we needed it most. So this week's lectionary, you know, that little guide that pastors get to use for reference, really sums up the passage from Genesis, that beautiful story. They say that God we worship is an artist and an inspiration of awe and wonder. God created all of this out of love. So take a peek at some of the slides and stay with me with this. It'll be fun. I think it'll, I think it'll be fun. All right, these will go a little bit fast, but you'll get a, get a peek at some of the, some of the pieces of nature <clears throat> and parts of God's creation that I just find beautiful. There you go. So scenes like these strike me with awe whenever I slow down enough to notice. This is the natural world around us as God created it. From the fish in the sea to the plains in the sky that take me across the country, God created it. Oh. All right, hoping it won't. That's where it's supposed to stay for a bit. Um, so God also provided the gifts, the skills, and the inventiveness that we could live and prosper in this world. It is a small tribute to see the sunset, the moon rising, or the clouds billowing to praise our Creator. I usually do this when I'm driving across the bottom of Lake Sebago, you know, and you can see the sunset there, or I can see in the wintertime, you know, when the sun's reflecting off Mount Washington across the lake. Well, I usually bring up the doxology. And yes, I sing to myself, because unless the windows are down and I'm going 60, it's just not fair to the world. Anyway, so I see that, sing that doxology. So that's how I praise God, the creator. God's love gives us beauty like this. A beauty that changes from day to day and day to night. A beauty that inspires painters, poets, and romantics. A beauty more than skin deep. All right, let's see if I can get this back. There we go. So we need the love of our creator. Imagine being left marooned on an island with no tools, no boat, no way to call for help. God didn't do that. God created the world with us in mind. We are provided with gifts of skills, talents, and the ability to reason and to invent. We just have to ask, and God provides out of love for man, his creation. God's love poured out once more to send Jesus to live among us. After all God's cultivation of man, after all the prophets spoke of the coming king, and when the time was right, God the creator sent his son Jesus place God's love and an understanding in our midst. In a world marked by empires, slavery, and poverty, God poured out what man needed. A human but divine savior, a teacher to reinterpret and clarify God's will, a sacrifice to bridge the gap between eternal death and new life with a loving God. Whether or not it was the right time in our mind, it was the right time in God's plan. When is the wrong time to learn how to practice unconditional love? God provides what man needs. To hear not from a cloud, not from a burning bush, but words from another man. One who walked the earth like us, was born like us, learned carpentry from his earthly father, and became a great teacher of men. While like us, the apostles tell the full story of how unlike us, he was in faith, in power, and in love stretching beyond all boundaries. We enjoy this love constantly, even if you have been stuck in the house for weeks on end. It is the phone call you make to check on your family or your neighbor. Love is the mailman or woman 
who is delivering daily. It is the doctors and the nurses healing the sick. But it is also the clerk at the grocery store, the custodian in the hospital, the cafeteria staff, and the food pantry workers serving those who need their help. Look for the reflection of God and Jesus in the faces of those who need help. God made us all and lives through us all. Jesus showed how to love all and commanded us to love everyone. We need God's love in our stricken world to bind these wounds, to heal the sick and care for our neighbors. When you feel too exhausted to help, too overwhelmed to act, too scared to reach out in love, then God's love rises within you as the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit acts with all the power and authority of God and dwells with us. This love from God powers us today. We need God's love in the form of the Holy Spirit for days like these, when we lost the use of our church building, when we lost one of our members to addiction, when we wait for a sickness that none of us are immune to, when we have to scramble to reorganize our work, our school, and our church. That Holy Spirit gives us the power to love when fear and hate rule. These are the days for God's love in all the forms we can call upon. <clears throat> God the Creator did not make a world absent of danger. We have storms, floods, and sickness, including COVID-19. These are all challenges we must face together. These are all opportunities to engage our gifts of time and talents to care for each other. We call on the Holy Spirit to guide us and to empower us as individuals and as a church. The pandemic could be a rallying point to unify our country and unify our world since the virus respects no boundaries and God's love knows no boundaries. Jesus' death on the cross did not free us from slavery here on earth and we suffer from its legacy in America. We have an economy that rewards fewer and fewer workers. We are not free from hunger, even though we produce and waste more food than ever before. When people of color suffer discrimination, we all lose access to their gifts and talents. <clears throat> when the people suffer from hunger and poverty, we all lose the potential for another family to join fully in our community. When Native Americans are cut off from our world, we all lose a centuries-old connection to the earth. And when Americans refuse to discuss and debate our issues and only shout opinions, we lose the tools of democracy that was created as one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Our days are different and filled with unknown. Challenges are everywhere we look. Look inside. Look for the love of God as creator, as Jesus, and as the Holy Spirit. God's love will see you and us through these days, filling them with reassurance. On the mountain in today's gospel, Jesus tells, says to the apostles, go, I send you. God's love is too big to stay in our hearts. In a church or in a nation, God's love will help us to confront our challenges. The Holy Spirit gives us the power to stand up for those in need, to confront the angry in the name of the powerless, to speak against those making racial slurs because our silence can no longer be an option. The Holy Spirit gives us the power to rebuild our lives with the knowledge gifted by God to our doctors, our scientists, and our leaders, so we don't have to choose between life, death, or economic calamity. God's love as the Holy Spirit is the power to share God's love with our neighbors. And neighbors are not just the folks on our street. Our neighbors are all of mankind, especially those not like us. Buxton UMC, we have been through so much together. We have so much more to do, and we can, cannot do it without God by our side and in our hearts. Our worship must spill out into the world around us. 
It must transform our living every day. Not just on this day, not just in this place, not just on the internet. Jesus was speaking to us when he said, I send you. Amen. Thanks for that. Let's go back here for a bit. I've got a little more to share with you, and we got a little more service to go. So this is uh, outside of Porter, where we live out here in the Wild West, along with uh, Len Ganya and also the uh, Ron and Marie and her their families. So let's see what else we got in this magic deck. Oh, well, let's join together. We haven't done this as a group together, so let's do this our and say the our Lord's prayer. So our Father who art in heaven. How would be thy name? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Ah, what a nice way to start to wrap this up, huh? Majesty, worship his majesty. Let's, uh, oh, that's a, that's, that's a secret. You gotta wait. I'll tell you about that one in a minute. So let me uh, figure out where I'm going next. Oh, back to YouTube. So YouTube is a very wonderful place to go. You can find all kinds of things and make it work out. Uh, so let's see if I can make it work out again. So this is not Linda's hands. We wish we can get that together and we could get that on, on video, but hopefully soon we'll be back even in smaller groups in mask apart from each other in our church. So that once again, we can hear uh, this tune in our church. This is an urgent appeal for oh, well, children. Yeah, well, funding for critical children's now you have to go through this. Globally. So this is why you have to corona. skip ads. Oh, sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Yes. So nice, huh? 
Now I got to look at my bulletin and figure out what I missed. So for those of you playing along, I'll go back. So today we're having a drive-in offering at the church. That's on June 7th. If it's not June 7th, you missed it. You got to come next month. Anyway, 1030 to 1130 in case you're looking at that's early in the morning or Saturday night. Both work. So after an offering, we do a prayer. And there was a nice one in the, in the lectionary this week. And it goes like this. So please join me in a prayer. Almighty God, we offer our gifts in gratitude this morning. Not just for what you do in our lives, but for who you are in our lives. You are with us in the person of the Father, the God above us. You come to meet us as the Son, as God beside us. You empower us to do the work of kingdom building by the Holy Spirit, God within us. Providing strength and boldness that we would never find on our own. May these gifts be tools that make the transformation of the world a reality. We pray in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In that doxology, there was a nice one for this too. So again, I'm staying more with the poetry side. So here we go. So think about singing this one though. Praise God, all peoples of the earth. Praise God for the great gift of birth. Praise God who rules the nation still. God, bend them to your perfect will. Praise God, the creator of all, peoples and nations, great and small. <clears throat> Praise God, who maketh wars to cease. God, lead us in paths of peace. So today's benediction, I thank you for all getting through service together. I thank Pastor Lynn for getting us through months of just turmoil and having us just an even keel of figuring out, moving the church, getting it the church fix with all the different folks in our com committees at, at Buxton that have put things together, got us back in, got it fixed. Now we're out. Now we'll be back in. But you know what? Through it all, our church has maintained that steady. We'll see what it takes and we'll get it done. That is just so much Buxton United Methodist Church. So the benediction today is from the reading. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. May God's love and the Holy Spirit's friendship be yours. So stay well, wash your hands, wear your masks, help others and make sure to ask others for help when you need it. We are here to serve one another in the name of Christ, amen. Thanks for staying with me for today's service. Have a great week. And here's that last slide, because when you talk about uh, sharing the love, one thing I always kind of picture is in my mind, but I'm uh, doing that. And it goes back to uh, our dear Peggy, you know? Let's see if I can I'll get out of the magic piano player. Oh, there was your last tune. So one of the things Peggy Waterman loved to do was Christmas, wasn't it? She had her little suitcase, and in that little suitcase, and going, going into every little window was a present. And she would make sure I would put them up right in those last couple years. But you know what? There's nothing more than having this piece of love that Peggy Waterman and everybody in Buxton really, you know, is able to do. And this is sharing the love. We share the love of God. Thank you, Buxton. Enjoy your week. Go forth. Amen.